The first step in rod building is finding the spine or locating the spine. It is the most critical part of custom rod building. Finding the spine is going to ultimately give you a better rod than you can purchase in a store, okay? The, there's only really two pieces of equipment that you're gonna need, a flat surface and a china marker. Jail is gonna demonstrate how to find a spine using these two tools. Very simple, but a huge step in rod building. Like you said, just a flat surface and a china marker is all you need. Go ahead and place the butt end on your flat surface and place your hand about a quarter of the way up from the tip, your other hand down here. Go ahead and deflect the blank, okay? Now one thing you don't want to do is put your hip tip you know, your hand yeah, towards you the tip. Yeah, you don't need it up here or down here, just right in the heart of the backbone. So go ahead and deflect that blank and with my with this hand, I'm, I'm rolling it, okay? And it's gonna pop into place there. Now, I put this tag here so you can see it on camera, but you can really feel this if you try this. You know, it's gonna pop up every time and I'm not really, I'm, all I'm doing is rolling it and it stops into one place. This means I have found the spine of my rod, okay? Now as he's marking the spine, you notice he's gonna be marking the inside. That's actually not the spine. The outside's the spine. He's making a mark just for a reference point so we know how to mount our reel seat. Since we're gonna build a spinning rod today, we wanna to make sure our reel seat lines up with that spine, yet the spine is gonna be on the outside. Another way to locate the spine of a rod is using a spine finder. Spine finder is basically two ball bearings, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna apply tape to two locations on the blank. The reason for this is we have two metal ball bearings in there against a graphite blank. Guess who wins? It's not gonna be the blank. So we wanna protect that blank as much as possible, okay? So what we'll do is we'll slide the blank in there into both or through both uh, ball bearings. And what JL is gonna do now is pull down on the rod blank, applying load to the rod blank. Okay, as he pulls, I'll turn the rod blank and you can see it'll jump into a pronounced bend, okay? And you can see it jump around as you can see the tape here. And as he applies more pressure, you'll be able to notice the tags down. Yep. And that's re the reason for that is when he was finding his spine earlier, the rod was upside down. So now it's actually in the location of uh, the way it's gonna actually fish. Yeah. So, so now, if I take yeah. a look at this, the mark that JL put on the underside is still there on the underside, just like the flag is. So now we found a spine, and the spine is on the outside. So now it looks more of as if you were fishing, you know. This is if a fish was bending this rod. If we're building a spinning rod, your reel's on the underside of the rod, so so are your guides, okay? If you're building a conventional rod, they're gonna be on top of the rod. So conventional casting rods are always on the outside of this curve spinning rods on the inside of the curve. Good way to think about this or to remember this and how this actually works is every rod blank has a spine or a backbone, just like you and me. We can only bend, pick something up in one direction, okay? When we pick something up, our spine's always facing the sky. So when, we're, when we lift something up, spinning rod, guides will be on the inside, casting rod, guides will be on the outside, just like that.